Hey, hey, welcome back. Uh, so we saved the best for last. Uh, so we got the Pixie camera here. Uh, so the Pixie camera uh, does color blob detection. So you train it a color blob, uh, and then it uh, tells the, the Lego, where is that blob? And so what it does is um, it tells you the X and the Y and the width and the height of where it sees it in the color field, right? So like it, it gives you like an X value of like how far over is it, a Y value for how high is it, um, a width and a height uh, for how big is this thing. And so it's coming from this, this camera here. Uh, so this camera um, can work without any like programming on the computer. And so the way it works is like you can plug it on and there's a, there's a button on top uh, and you can train it uh, to follow a color and you don't need to connect it to your computer at all. But uh, we found that it, it is fun. Um, and so we've given you a, a mini USB cable. Uh, and so it connects on this guy here. By the way, this mini USB cable kills me because people try to connect it like, so there's a spot on the brick where it could connect, but it doesn't go there. It goes uh, to the Pixie camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, plug it in there uh, and I'm going to kind of set it uh, on this box here just so I can kind of uh, point at the wall. Um, and we're going to play with the Pixie cam some. By the way, notice that I already took my lens cap off, so my lens cap is, is no longer on there. What we're going to do with it is a couple different things. I guess we should show a video of what we're going to make first. Uh, so here's a uh, just a quick video. So here I've trained it to follow blue, right? So uh, wherever I put that blue square at, uh, it's tracking blue, and you can see it's, it's just turning uh, to follow blue. We're going to do a few things with it in the modules, but really not many. We're just going to kind of teach you the API. It's really there in case you want to do something with it in your project, right? That's what the Pixie camera is all, all about. So you can see that um, it tracks colors, but before it can track colors, you have to train it a color. So let's talk about uh, training. So uh, one thing you can do is you can watch these videos. This is a, a demo of how you train it. Uh, so the guy that made the tool uh, just kind of talked about it here. Uh, there's also, this is a silly video. They're, they're kind of advertising that it works on Lego, which is why we have one. Um, and so this Pixie camera, just to kind of talk about it, it comes in two, two flavors. It comes in an Arduino version, uh, if you program microcontrollers, and it comes in a Lego version. Um, and it turns out that it's the same camera it's just a matter of what firmware it's got on there. Um, and the reason I mentioned is that some of ours came from a generation where we used an Arduino, and some of them came from a generation where we used Lego. And they, they behave the same, they're identical, unless you do a reset, uh, which I'll get to later. And if you reset it and you had an Arduino, it goes back to the Arduino uh, interface, which is no good. So I just mention uh, they're both in there because that's kind of the background of this camera is that it's used for both platforms. So in order to like uh, understand this camera better, they have a program called Piximon. Uh, and so I'll put the link above the video as well. Uh, but go to this link uh, and download Piximon. Uh, so depending on Windows, Mac, probably most people are Windows. Um, and go ahead and, and you can get it up and running now. It just it won't do much until you've got a Pixie connected. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, load up Piximon. By the way, they're purple dinosaurs, kind of their, their logo here. So here's Piximon. doesn't quite fit on the screen. Uh, and if I plug in my, my camera, uh, if I get my USB port the right way, uh, what it should do is it should identify uh, that it just had a camera connected uh, and it should start uh, feeding the video stream. Uh, so there you go. Um, notice that you can actually see my green screen in, in that video. Um, and so this is, this is my camera. Um, and what it does is it has a focus first so I can uh, adjust. Um, I'm twisting the lens cap is what I'm doing here. Um, so if I wanted to focus on my face, you can see that I'm blurry right now. Uh, and there I came in pretty good, right? Um, and so it gives you the camera feed that it sees, but the information that it passes to the brick is different. Uh, the information that passes to the brick is just X, Y, width, height. And it does that to take the, the heavy processing off the, the Lego. It just does it on board that little blackboard. So here's how it works. Um, so you train it a color. So here I've got a random orange block. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to train it uh, to look for this orange. Uh, and then as I move it around, it'll track it, right? Uh, sometimes it's losing my computer today. So to train it, here's what you do. Uh, you press down on this little uh, button on the top until there's an LED on here. It goes red. And I'll show it in a second. 
But what it's doing is it's now like trying to look for what color to track. Um, and it shows you in Pixiemon, hey, I, I, I predict that you want this orange color. Uh, so there it's detecting orange. We'll see if my, uh, my cable cuts out again. Once you've got it uh, over the thing you want to teach it, so here I want to teach it orange, uh, you press the button again, uh, and what it does is it starts tracking that thing. Uh, and so now it's tracking this orange box. And it's kind of interesting that uh, what, it, uh, what it gives you is it takes this raw video um, and um, it overlays what it sends to the Lego device. Uh, so let's see, I think one of these buttons, yeah, home. Home is what it sends to the Lego device. So here's what it actually sends to the Lego. Um, it sends what is the width and the height um, and then the X and the Y. Um, and you can see that it uh, it loses it sometimes, right? Um, and what it's doing here is it's depending on like what reflection I am with my lights changes the color. So you've got to be careful with the Pixie camera because it is dependent upon light quite a bit. And this cook view kind of shows you both. And you can kind of see here um, it's currently trained. It's a little sensitive, right? And one thing you can do in the settings is you can change the sensitivity. Um, so you can set the, uh, the range to be far less sensitive. Um, and then maybe it would lose it less, but I might pick up false positives. So here it's picking up my shirt, right? So um, you can tweak uh, settings like that, but the best thing is to try to find colors um, that are pretty unique, right? So now I've kind of got it to where it's, uh, it's doing pretty well. Uh, let's show you what I did to set it again. Um, and so I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well, uh, but you press down on this button on the top until the light changes to red. So it kind of goes white and then red. And then once it's red, you let off. Um, and it's now trying to learn uh, a color. So it's trying to learn this orange. I guess I'll teach it orange again. That's what my office looks like. And once you've got it uh, to learn, you press the button here, um, and then it starts learning that color. Uh, so that's one way to train it, is with the, the button on top. Uh, and you can see that it's tracking the orange value. Ah, uh, right, I was going to lose it there. Um, another way you can do it is you can use Pixiemon to train a color. Um, and in the action menu, there's this, like, if you click on action and yours, set color signature one, it'll freeze the frame, right? And you can say, hey, I want to teach you this color. And you can kind of drag with your mouse uh, out that color. And so now it's learned that color is signature one. Now, the way Pixie really works is you can train it up to uh, eight different colors. Uh, maybe it's seven colors. In this class, in these modules, we're just going to use uh, color number one. But if you wanted to teach it multiple colors, you totally could. Uh, let me go steal another color. Uh, I've got a, a gray here that will try to teach it this gray color. Um, and again, you could use the light pipe mode to train it a color. Um, or you could use the menu that says like set color. So let's say I wanted to set color signature two to, uh, to this color right here. Uh, so there it's picking up color signature two um, and color signature one. And so now it's kind of tracking two different objects. Um, and again, you can see the information that it sends to the Pixie or the Lego uh, by hitting this home button. And you can see that this is the data that it would be able to transfer over. Um, and the way we use it is in the modules is just with one color signature, but you can see that you can use up to eight different color signatures. Now, if you program on a bunch of different color signatures and then you don't want them, uh, you can also reset it. Uh, the way you reset it uh, is in the menu. It's under Action, uh, Restore Default Parameters. Sorry, it's not, uh, not showing up on the screen all the way there, but you can see it's mostly there. Once you restore the default parameters, you can see it's no longer trained over any colors. If you do that, this is important, um, check to make sure that it didn't revert to being an Arduino device. Um, so I've got this in the slides, but if it could be an Arduino device, you have a, a, a thing up here that says interface. I don't because this one was purchased as a Lego, uh, but if you do, um, it'll look like this. So it'll say interface uh, and it'll default to say Arduino, set it back to Lego I squared C and hit okay. Um, so this is how you train it colors. Typically you only have to train it one color uh, color signature one, uh, which I'm going to train here again, uh, and I'm going to use the, the button on top. So I hit the button until it goes red. Once it's red, I let off, uh, and then now it's kind of learning this color, so I press the button again. It flashes at me to confirm that it's now uh, tracking that color, right? 
let's talk about how you use uh, the Pixie once you've actually got a color trained. So you can't do anything until you've got a color trained. Uh, but once you've got a color trained, then you can start using the sensor. Uh, and the code looks like this. Uh, so you say uh, Pixie equals uh, ev3.sensor. This is the first time we've used the sensor class, but this is the, the parent class of all sensors. And we're specifying the name of the driver, uh, which is kind of a weird thing to do. And the reason that this one's different is because the color sensor is very common. Lots of people use it. Touch sensor, very common. Lots of people use it. IR sensor, everybody uses it. Lego sensor, less common. Not made by Lego. Um, there's no like special class for it. But you can use lots of sensors by specifying their driver name, which is what we're doing here. Uh, every sensor has modes that it can use. Uh, the modes in Pixie um, let you say what color signature you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to say SIG1, which is for color signature 1. If you wanted to do color signature 2, you just say color SIG2. If you want to do two at the same time, you would say mode 1, get some values, then mode 2, get some values. And if you want to do that in your project, that's great. In the modules, we will not do that, though. Once you've set the mode, which in the modules is always going to be SIG1, you can say dot .value, um, and it'll tell you value 1 is X, 2 is Y, uh, 3 is width, and 4 is height. There is also a 0, but, but I don't think this is important to you. Uh, what this will do is this will tell you just the biggest block, whichever one is the biggest, what's the X, the Y, the width, and the height. Um, and we're going to do different things with this, uh, and that's the example we showed that first time. Of you know We used it to uh, track the color blue. So now you can kind of understand what this video is doing is uh, the Pixie was already trained for blue. I trained it up before I started the, uh, the Python code at all. Uh, it's just saying X, Y, width, and height. For this, I'm only using X, right? So I'm just using X and I'm ignoring all the other information. If X is below some threshold, I turn left. If it's above some threshold, I turn right. Uh, so that's what uh, we're doing in that module. There's a couple modules. Uh, one of the modules is, let me get to it here. Uh, I guess here's a, another demo. So this is kind of like a standalone demo. Make the sensor, make sure it's connected, set the mode, uh, and then you get X, Y, width, and height. Pretty simple concept, right? Oh, I'll mention that sometimes the Pixie's a little uh, temperamental. Um, and so if it uh, is a little buggy and you have problems with it, um, try to figure it out, try to make the best of it. The thing I find most frustrating, though, is colors change depending on light reflectiveness. So like my box here kind of went away when I did this or did this. So you have to be really careful about the light in the room. And definitely if you change rooms, plan on recalibrating your colors. Uh, so we're going to do a couple modules. One is beep at blue. So when you put blue up, it just beeps. Uh, one is we're going to merge it with MQTT, which is kind of neat. Um, and we're going to pass back to your computer the X, Y, width, and height. And your computer is going to display it um, using like rose graphics type things, right? Um, and then the last one is that color tracking. To be honest, the modules won't really push you that much. I mean, they'll, they'll hopefully be kind of fun and you'll learn the API. Um, but it's really a tool you can use for your project. Because the API is just value 1, 2, 3, 4, um, and X, Y, width, height, right? So that's the whole thing you need to know. All right, so that's, uh, that's kind of it for analog sensors. Uh, when you get into class, uh, you'll actually start using these things. Uh, color sensors, a nice, easy introduction. Uh, going to be doing some kind of like neat line following things. The infrared sensor is probably the hardest challenge of doing that beacon pickup. Uh, and then the Pixie camera is kind of like the most like impressive sensor um, and you'll be uh, training it uh, and then you'll be like doing the, the beep at blue and the color tracking. Again, I recommend you download Piximon, but you don't technically need it um, as this little button that's on the top of the Pixie cam can do everything you want. You just hold it down until you get a little red LED uh, and then you let off when you get to red. Um, you put in front of it whatever you want and with it in front, uh, you press it again and you've, you've taught it that color. All right, so uh, you know all you need to know. Uh, go work some modules. <laughs> Good luck. Bye.